everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. If we've painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today's video is on how to paint flip-flops. So let's take a look at the supplies that we'll be using and then we will jump right in. So we have two colors of paint that we're using today. We have aqua and pure black. These are both Folk Art multi-surface brand paints. This is not a sponsored video, but I do just believe in sharing with you guys the paints that I use and the brands and that I've used for years and that I know will work well for this method of painting. So Folk Art multi-surface. The best thing about multi-surface paints is they work great no matter what it is that we are painting on. So whether it's wood or tin or glass or a canvas, multi-surface works great. It's got a little bit of a sealer in it. It's a little bit thicker paint. Wonderful. Wonderful for anything you're painting on. And again, not endorsed, just like sharing with you guys what I use. Uh, we have two paint brushes today. We have a number 12 flat brush and a number one liner brush. Now these brushes are Folk Art One Stroke brand paint brushes, but honestly, you guys, any brush you have at home, any flat brush and any liner will work just fine. In the description of the video though, I will list the colors that we're using today, all the supplies that I'm gonna show you. Um, so you'll have everything in that description for when you're painting at home. Okay, let me move these out of the way. So other supplies that we have today, we have a styrofoam plate. This is our very fancy sec, but just styrofoam plate. Um, we have a water basin here off kind of to the side to rinse the brushes, whatever you guys have at home, a cup works just fine. Then on the table here is some wax paper. I think you can kind of see that on the video. Whether you're painting with me in person or at home, wax paper is just the best thing because it's a nice smooth surface. We use this to practice on and it's wonderful because you can practice everything first on the wax paper before you go to the good service. So if you're at home and you're going to paint these flip-flops on a wine glass, grab your wax paper, practice here before you go to the good surface. Okay. Um, really, that's about it. I have some paper towels here off in the distance, and that's really all we need to get started. So let me show you a couple of examples here of just some flip-flops. This is a little wooden sign. And so here you can see the different color flip-flops. Did a little bit of writing on top. Polka dots, if you've painted with me before, you know I love polka dots. I have a polka dot problem a lot of the time. I just love them, but that's kind of there. We also have just a glass bowl here. Super cute, just flip flops going all the way around. So we're gonna just give you some ideas there, some inspiration on what you can do with these flip flops. So let's take a look. Um, let's grab our paintbrush and we're going to Load the paint on our brush, and then we will get started on our wax paper. Okay, so we're gonna use, the first brush we're gonna use is our number 12 flat brush. Okay, and we are just loading one color on the brush today. So you're going to dip in the aqua color and just dip both sides. And then what you wanna do is swoosh back and forth. Okay, and that's gonna work the paint up into the brush. Just flip both sides back and forth. We really want a good amount of paint on this brush. Okay, I like to say it looks goopy so that when we're doing this shape of this flip-flop, it really flows nicely because you have so much paint on there. Okay, all right, so I'm just going to move this over here. Now, you guys will feel as we're practicing when you need to pick up more paint. So whenever you do, you just go right back to that paint spot, swoosh back and forth and pick up more paint. Okay, so let's talk about, here's another little sign that I had kind of off to the distance too, just a little wood sign. But let's talk about the shape of this flip-flop. They're, they're not quite a solid oval. If you think about how a flip-flop is shaped, it's a little larger around the top of the flip-flop. Then it does have a little bit of an indent, a little bit of a curve before you come down to the bottom, okay? So a little... Uh, wider up top, a little narrow at the bottom, and it does just come in just a little bit. And it's funny, you'll see when we start practicing these, they almost look like circus peanuts until we add the little strap. Then they're like, oh, those are flip-flops. So it's just kind of fun how they all come together. Okay, let me scooch this back. Now let's talk about how to build this flip-flop. So I will tell you, if you've painted um, with me before, we've talked about how things that are oval or circle um, you have to go slow because they do tend to grow 
pretty quickly. And you'll see when we're practicing these flip-flops, how it's very easy to do your shape and then kind of keep tweaking it and tweaking it and they tend to grow bigger and bigger. So my advice when we're practicing these at first is start small. You can always make them bigger, um, but it's hard to make them smaller once they've started. So, okay, so here's my little trick for doing flip-flops. So we are gonna start with our brush straight up and down. Okay, we're gonna be right on that edge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a figure eight. Let me see if I can get a little closer here so you guys can see. Okay, we're gonna start with a figure eight. So what I mean is we're gonna start right up on the edge and we are going to come up and pull down a loop. And that's the top of the eight. Okay, and I'm going to start back where we were before we started, and I'm going to come down and bring it around. Okay, and actually from the side angle here, it almost looks like an infinity symbol, if you think of that. Okay, so a figure eight. What we're going to do is fill that in. Okay, just kind of paint all that in. Okay, so now we have a filled in figure eight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come and pull these sides in, fill those in to get our flip-flop shape. So remember we talked about the top of the flip-flop is just a little bit wider, okay? And then we're going to come down and I'm just going to slowly fill in the edge of this flip-flop, okay? We're going to come on this side and you can be up on the edge or a little flatter, either way is okay. But we're just going to pull it straight down couple times. Okay. So here's your shape. So it's not quite as narrow in that center where when we started as figure eight, you can even come a little further out, fill it in a little bit more. Okay. Okay. And there's our shape. Let's do it again. Let's do another one here. And you guys, I'm just coming back to my plate, dipping in, swooshing both sides. Swoosh it back and forth to really kind of work that paint up in the brush. Okay, and then let's do another flip-flop here. So remember, we start with a figure eight. So I'm just up on the edge of the brush and I'm gonna come up and do a loop. That's a top loop. And then I'm gonna start at the same place where I started. Remember, we were here. Now I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna come down. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. We're just kind of sketching out where that shape is gonna be and now we're gonna fill it in. So don't worry if your lines are smooth or bumpy, it doesn't matter. This is just kind of the skeleton if you think of it that way and then we're gonna fill in and build. Okay, so here's our figure eight. We're gonna fill this all in. Okay, just paint that all in solid. Okay, now definitely still looks like a figure eight here. So remember what we wanna do is we're gonna come and we're gonna kind of work on our sides. Okay, and I'm gonna come down and just sort of fill in and see how we started and it had that indent. Now it's kind of a more solid shape, but we still maintain that little bit of a curve there. Okay, I'm gonna come here and we're gonna fill in and we're gonna fill in and we're gonna fill in. Now on this one, I'm gonna just take that brush and I'm gonna round out this top a little bit because I really like my flip-flops to have the top a little wider than the base. Think of how a flip-flop is shaped. If you're putting your foot in there, your toes are gonna go up top, but your heel's down here. So a little bit wider up top, a little narrow, and remember just a little bit of that indent, and that's why we start with the figure eight, and then you kind of poof it out from there, okay? All right, you know what? I'm gonna do one more here just so you can watch it one more time, and then we're gonna add our straps, okay? So let's do another one here. So straight up and down is where I'm starting. We have the top loop of our eight and the bottom loop of our figure eight. Also kind of an infinity symbol. Either way works. We're gonna fill it in. Okay, nothing fancy. Just a uh, filled in. See how it kind of has that circus peanut look? <laughs> That's what I think of, especially when I paint them orange. It really reminds me of circus peanuts. Okay, so we started with our figure eight. We filled it in and now we're gonna come and I'm just gonna slowly fill in these sides because you wanna keep a little bit of that curve, but we don't want it as dramatic as we have here. Okay, so I'm gonna come around the edge, pull it down. And now you could just kind of tweak your edges. I am gonna make this top part just a smidge wider, just 
expand that out because I like the top of my flip-flops to be a little wider than the bottom. But here's the thing, you know, you start off with your figure eight and you fill in your sides and then you can always tweak it. But as you guys are practicing this, do you, do you see how it's very easy for these to grow really big? Because I could spend I, so much time tweaking this edge and tweaking this edge and before you know it, the flip-flops this big when I, when I was kind of shooting for this. So that's my only thing. Start small. You can always add to it to make it bigger, but they do increase pretty quickly. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let me grab this wood here. So now we have our little shapes. Okay, they just kind of look like blobs so far, but now we're going to talk about adding the strap that you can see on there, and that makes all the difference in the world. Let me show you this one too, because this one has, we did the straps in black, and they show up a little better, so you can kind of see. Okay, so what we're looking at here, I know I've got a little bit of a glare, let me tilt that, is if you look at the strap, it's basically a wishbone. Okay, can you guys see how it starts up and then it curves? Basically a wishbone shape, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our black paint now that we have on our plate. We are going to grab our little skinny number one liner brush. You guys can see that. Now the cool thing about this brush is that it basically works like a pen or a pencil, okay? So it's got a, a pretty narrow tip, and this is what you do all your small details with. So to load the paint on this brush, we are gonna dip in this black paint, just kind of dip the tip, and then I'm going to roll it. Let me see if you guys can see the fingers, so kind of rolling it in between my pointer and my thumb. And what that does, it's rolling it in the paint, but it's keeping that point real narrow which will give you a nice line when you're using it. So rather than swooshing back and forth like we did with our bigger brush, this one you roll and kind of press down while you're rolling so the paint works up there, but you have a nice edge. Okay, all right. And remember, every time you pick up paint, you'll do exactly what we're doing the first time we're loading. So my plate will be over here. When I need to pick up more paint, I'll go dip it in there and I will roll it to put those bristles back nice and tight together. Okay, all right, so. Let's talk about how we start this. So if you think of how a flip-flop is shaped and even like a realistic flip-flop, so your toes would be up here, right? So when you're starting this strap, you don't wanna start right at the top edge of your flip-flop, you wanna come down a little bit because you wanna leave toe room, okay? Now what I recommend is, we'll start with this one up here, is that you put a dot Okay, right up top there. And that will give you your starting point because you're gonna do the left side and then the right side and you wanna start at that same dot. Okay, so I think also how, this is hard to explain I think, but maybe you can see here. The, the strap of a flip-flop is not centered, okay? Cause you have a big toe and then you have your rest of your toes. So you think of that. So the strap is actually a little off center because uh, that's how the, the a real flip-flop is is made. I hope that makes sense. Okay, we have to have toe room, they're flip-flops. Okay, so we're gonna start, I have my dot here. Now with this brush, you're gonna be straight up and down. You're gonna hold it like a pen or a pencil and we just wanna be right on that edge. We're gonna skate right along the top of the edge. With this brush, the harder you push down, the wider it will make the line. So if you're going for a really skinny line, you wanna just be right up on that edge. If you want a wider strap, then you would push down. Okay, so we're gonna start right at the dot and I'm gonna do the left-hand side first. So I'm gonna come and start pulling towards myself. Then I'm gonna curve to the left. I'm gonna go outside the edge of the flip-flop and then bring it back inside. Okay, let's do the other side now. And I'm picking up more paint. I wanna make sure I have fresh paint. And I roll that brush in the paint. I'm gonna come right back to where we started. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna pull down towards myself. Now I'm coming out to the right and I'm gonna curve around. I'm gonna go outside the edge of the flip-flop and come right back in. Okay, so let me show you up here one more time. So we start, I made my dot here and we did left, go outside the edge of the flip-flop and come back, go back to the same dot. You're gonna head right, go outside the edge and come back. Okay, that makes it look kind of like a, a real strap that's coming off. All right, I'm gonna pick up some more paint, loading up some more black here, and let's come over 
and we're going to start with our dot and let's give straps to these two flip-flops too. All right, so remember you're straight up and down. You're going to be right on that edge. I'm going to start. I'm going to pull towards myself first a little bit. And then I'm going to come out to the left, bring it around and down. Remember, outside the edge of the flip-flop. We're going to come right back here. I'm going to pull down, curve to the right, and bring it back in. Now I'm going to push down even thicker on this one, even harder, so you can see how it looks when you have a thicker strap. Okay, so remember we start our dot. You want to leave toe room so you don't start right at the edge of the flip-flop. You come down a little bit. Okay, now this one I'm going to press harder so you can kind of see the difference. All right, I'm going to squish that brush, pull it towards me a little bit, heading left, go outside the edge of the flip-flop and come back. Can you see the difference here? This was a skinny line and this one's a little poofier. Okay, and that's just simply by pressing this brush down harder. Okay, we go back to that same dot where we started, push down, I'm gonna pull down to myself and now I'm gonna curve to the right, go outside the edge of the flip-flop and then bring it back in. Okay, the difference just in pressing harder on the brush gives you either a skinny strap or a really wide strap, okay? All right, so we did our figure eight, then we filled it in, painted in, and then we worked our edges so they kind of straightened out a little bit and kind of filled that in. And then we started with a dot and then we made a wishbone. We went down the left-hand side and down the right-hand side. And then the pressure, this is just on the edge of that liner brush and this is really pushing down. Okay, so the other cute thing we had on here was just some polka dots that filled in. And if you've painted with me before, you know I love polka dots. And you've probably heard my secret to polka dots. It's not really a secret, but I like sharing with people anyway. To do the perfect polka dot, I'm going to jump back to this flat brush that we had. I haven't rinsed it yet, so it's a little bit blue there still. But we're going to turn it over, and I'm going to use this handle. So to do a polka dot, you come back, you take the handle, not the brush, the handle, dip it in the paint, and then tap it on your surface. And if you want a bigger polka dot, you can even give it a little swirl. So dip in the paint, tap, dip in the paint, tap, and that gives you the perfect polka dot every time. And again, if you like a larger polka dot, you tap, but then you just give it a little swirl and that'll give you a bigger polka dot, okay? Perfect polka dot every time. So this is a little bigger. You could also use the liner and make a little skinnier polka dot if you'd like. All right, let's lift this up so you can kind of get a good view of what they look like since you've been watching them sideways and my wax paper is being stubborn. So there we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're just going to tear that off. <laughs> okay, so there you go. You can kind of see, and remember we talked about the difference between the lines, little skinny lines versus thick, and that's just the pressure that you do in the brush. All right, super cute, super summery. You guys, these are just adorable on any surface. Remember I showed you the little wood signs. These are just little chipboard wood that we painted on. A little liner brush to write the words, that little skinny brush. And then this was, this was the glass bowl that we had that we looked at first. Flip-flops also super cute on wine glasses if you were doing a summery wine glass. But all the polka dots are in there, all the colors. The last thing I will tell you about flip-flops when you are painting them. I have people ask all the time, should I do a pair of flip-flops or just single flip-flops? I will tell you, when you're doing something like a bowl or a wine glass, like what I just showed you, or even that sign, it's much easier if you do single flip-flops kind of spread out. The reason being, it's very difficult to get flip-flops side by side that are symmetrical. You, it can be done, absolutely, but it just takes a little bit of practice because inevitably one is just a little bit off than the other and, and that really <laughs> tends to bother people sometimes. So I think my recommendation when you're starting out with flip-flops is just kind of do single flip-flops that aren't necessarily part of a pair. That way you can make them assorted colors and designs. You know, you can, we did real basic flip-flops today, but you could come back and do um, stripes or polka dots or zigzags actually on the flip-flop to decorate those two. So it's kind of fun when you just do random ones rather than really concentrating on a pair of flip-flops because that's a little, that's going to stress you out at first and we don't want that. 
All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the flip-flop video. Um, remember, in the comments will be the descriptions of the, the colors to paint, the brushes we used, all that good stuff. So that'll be all the supplies will be in that description for you. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comments below. I love getting the feedback. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, let me know that as well. I always love hearing from you guys. I really appreciate it. And if you would consider subscribing to my channel, that would be awesome. It will let you know then when the next video gets uploaded. So you'll get to see all the fun stuff that we're painting and get to paint along at home, which I just think is super fun. So um, like and subscribe if you would to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you again so much. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.